Kia ora and welcome to Cinema in Context, where we discuss all things film and the connections between. My name is Jeremy Downing. I'm William Chen. And I'm Sarah Watt. And each month at Cinema in Context, we discuss two films, one current and one retrospective with some connection. It could be the same director, the same actor, or a similar theme. This month we are discussing The Flash, which came out this year from Warner Brothers and DC Films. And Batman Returns, the Tim Burton sequel from the early 90s. Is it 1992? Mm-hmm. 1992. Mm, those um, halcyon days. Yes, uh, sort of pre or sort of growing CGI days. And uh, the connection being they're both superhero films with multiple superheroes, including Michael Keaton as Batman. I don't think that's much of a spoiler because it's in the trailer. That's right. Yeah. But there are definitely spoilers for both films too. I'm pretty sure Michael Keaton's Batman is larger on the poster of The Flash than The Flash himself. Right. <laughs> right. So it's a big draw card. And we can talk about why that is. Mm. I think there's probably some good reasons more than just the draw of Michael Keaton why he's mm-hmm. bigger than Ezra Miller. Um, but yeah, we will be spoilering both Batman Returns and The Flash. So if you don't want to have those surprise ruined for you, pause this episode, and come back to it at a future date. All right, shall I kick us off with a bit of a description about... Batman Returns. Batman Returns. Mm-hmm. So Batman Returns is the sequel to the 1989 film, Batman, also directed by uh, Tim Burton. Batman was a bit of a cultural phenomenon, being it was the first uh, live-action film of the Batman franchise, which, as we kind of now know, is one of the biggest superhero franchises in cinema history. Mm. Uh, there had been Superman before, but Batman really set the tone yeah. as being dark, gritty... Real, I mean, it's sort of laughable now because we've kind of moved so much more beyond that, especially with the most recent Batman. But mm. especially compared to what everyone knew Batman as, which is the Adam West, you know, 66 exactly. series. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, so dark, so yeah. gritty. Yeah. Um, and kind of bringing in big name actors, I think that was quite another significant uh, part of the film. So you had Jack Nicholson in the first one. But then, of course, in the new one, you have Danny DeVito as the Penguin and Michelle Pfeiffer, who was a growing star at the time, as Catwoman, Mm. in what has been described as the bat, the cat, and the penguin? The The, bird. The bird? The bird. There we go. The rat? (laughs) I don't know. I mean, he does live in the sewer, but he's not a rat. This is true. So um, the penguin is a discarded young child, grows up in the sewers of uh, an abandoned theme park, as well as some sort of circus, um, and decides to return to Gotham with some sort of dastardly plan uh, meanwhile, there is, is a Max Shrek. Yes. Max Shrek is the big business mogul who has a plan to kind of screw over Gotham City, but under the guise of helping them through a new power generator, quote unquote generator. Um, and Played his, by Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken. And Amazing. One of, one of my favorite roles of his. Yes. And he has a, a, a sort of a lowly secretary or, or assistant as she keeps trying to. Executive assistant, keeps mm. trying to push. Played mm. by Michelle Pfeiffer, Selena Kyle, who meets some sort of untimely, I don't want to say death, but some, something happens where she's uh, transformed into Catwoman. Mm-hmm. And kind of bat, cat, and bird chaos ensues. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. Really ever. Yeah. <laughs> All right, William, give us a bit of an overview of 2023's The Flash. Right, so The Flash, directed by Andy Muschietti, uh, is the long gestating final feature film of The Flash in the so-called Snyderverse that started with Man of Steel back in, was it 2013? Yeah. Um, Which is heavily referenced in this movie as Mm. well. Uh, Where the titular Flash, um, Barry Allen, wants to save his mother by going back in time. But by doing so, inadvertently changes the future so that superheroes or metahumans no longer exist. And everything is topsy-turvy, including Michael Keaton's Batman for some reason. Right? Yeah. Mm. A lot of things happen in this movie. Yeah. That's the setup. (laughs) A lot. Cool. Well, Sarah, you jump in. You know, where should we start? Batman Returns or 2023's The Flash? I don't know why I keep saying the the year, but it feels like movie titles are so long these days, we need to kind of elongate them with a year, apparently. Anyway, well, Sarah, over to you. Guys, 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 I'd like to take us back in time to 1989, actually, to the original Batman movie. Um, as you know, I've been on this earth only marginally longer than the both of you, but um, my f- seminal film memories can basically be noted down as E.T. when I was... No, Empire Strikes Back, first film I saw in the cinema... E.T., first time I was truly moved in the cinema. And then 1989, I remember vividly going to the movies with a bunch of my friends and 
coming away profoundly affected by cinema as the glorious um, collusion of um, picture and sound. And I bought the Danny Elfman soundtrack on cassette tape and played it ad, nause ad nauseum. And I do remember, I'm not making this up, I remember that film really being the first to really give me a sense of what cinema could do and what film could do. And it really ignited in me this idea that I might like to make film in future. Um, so Batman Returns, I mean, in those days, we went, we saw everything in the movies when it came out. So there was no question we would have gone and seen Batman Returns in the pictures. So when you suggested, Jeremy, that that should be our connection to The Flash, um, I thought, oh, I haven't seen that since then. But I was so happy to go back and watch it and to see, well, and, and you know, as I sort of belied to you guys, I have real issues with Jack Nicholson. I find him like talented, blah, 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 but such an ass. Uh, so I was really glad not to have to watch his Joker, even though I probably should go back and see it. But flippin' heck, Danny DeVito blew me away. Michelle yeah. Pfeiffer, mm. who I, and I saw all of her film, Tequila Sunrise and The Witches of Eastwick, and I grew up with Michelle Pfeiffer, but my goodness, she's incredible in this film. And I absolutely love Christopher Walken, who of course subsequently was, you know, true romance mm. and, um, well, every, every jolly thing. I love how committed he is to Tim Burton's <laughs> movie. None of the actors... Um, <clears throat> None of the actors give any impression at all of being too big for their boots mm -hmm. or just kind of like lazy about it, you know. And then I suddenly remembered Michelle Pfeiffer being in articles and saying how that outfit that she was sewn, she had to be sewn into that vacuum, outfit. Vacuum um, pack, Sealed into yeah. it, you know. They had to sew her into it. They couldn't zip it up because there couldn't be a zip visible, blah, blah, blah. And it was incredibly uncomfortable. So now when you watch it and you see her tiny kind of... <laughs> frame in that outfit and everything just amazing so i really loved returning to batman returns uh and um we'll talk about the flash in a moment it's such the it's the peak of tim burton's career really is I it think. though is it well i think so because he did edward scissorhands oh. batman returns and then i believe ed wood would have come relatively soon after that right. but that was obscure wasn't and it then, oh, in the middle of that though. nightmare before christmas oh. which he didn't direct but it was kind of you know, people call it his Christmas trilogy. So right. Scissor Hands returns in their Nightmare Before Christmas. Mm. Yeah. Uh, all within the span of two years, I think. Yeah. And they're all Christmas movies. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. see. I mean, Beetlejuice is fantastic. I mean, the original Batman is great. But I think there's something about that season where he'd built up enough clout to be able to take on these projects. Right. You know, part of the reason why he came back to do Batman Returns is because he had more creative control. Right. And Which you can tell, can't you? Sorry to interrupt, <laughs> oh, but I mean, boy. my gosh. Yeah. I was watching it, you see, and this is the thing again, watching it uh, 30, 30, 30 well, years 30, on. 35th anniversary was this week. Right. So it's of also Batman Returns. Batman Returns. So oh, it feels wow. appropriate that we've chosen this. I don't know that when we chose it, but I've right. just been seeing it popping up everywhere yeah. on socials. But if it's 1992 and we're in 2022... Okay, maybe it's 30 years. 30. Sure. Yeah. So, but anyway, you no, know... But 2023. How... Hang on, when did it come out? Uh, 92. So oh. 31 years. Okay, so 31. maybe maybe I'm getting some yeah. old posts. That's okay. But, the, you know... But 30 years. 30 yeah. years, right? But with the minute that it started, I was like, oh my God, this is such a Tim Burton movie. Yeah. <laughs> because now everything we've ever seen from Tim Burton is absolutely of that ilk. Yeah. And it's so different from a Nolan film. Mm. And, and I adore the Nolan films. Mm. He can do no wrong. I, I That's my favourite Batman era but uh sorry i would, I would so, agree yeah, yeah. i would agree yeah. but yes I, I think danny devito is so good yes. he's so creepy my memory of this movie i don't i don't remember i was too young for the 1989 film but i definitely remember this movie coming out mm. and i would have been at primary school i would mm. have been five or six years old mm. and i remember there was some competition at school and you won tickets to go and see batman returns at the cinema and i won them i won wow. these tickets wow. but my parents wouldn't take me because there was a lot of chatter at the time that it was too dark for kids yeah um it's pretty it, scary it, it, it is, is dark and it's really sexualized like yeah yes. true yeah. but you don't notice it when you're little no, like no, there's a lot of I mean even when he says oh I've been waiting for a pussy and yeah. things like that you didn't yeah, I was, really I like notice. to show her my French flipper trick yeah yeah, yeah. Stuff, yeah. Oh. which is really gross but, um, I would, but I think that the kind of the black green goo coming mm -hmm. out of the penguin's mouth which is wonderful I mean now mm -hmm. I love it I don't know how I would have reacted to that as a kid and I think there's that quite terrifying 
a shot of Max, Max Shrek, Shrek being completely fried. Yes, but also when she falls off the roof or is pushed, when she's pushed off the roof and the cats come, that's um, it's not gory. That's super creepy and scary. Yeah, yeah. it's horrifying. It, and, it, how they it's, shoot and it's it. literal horror. Well, when she's falling through the scaffolding, yes. like the cutting is so quick. It's like, bam, bam, bam. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes. Or the cat yeah. chewing on her mm. finger yeah. and her eyes. That's right. Eyes so I yeah. wouldn't want a child to watch that because those are the sorts of images mm-hmm. that then come in your dreams, I think, more than... And then when, of course, you know? Immediately after, yeah. when Catwoman returns to her apartment, now as Catwoman, and she's taking her stuffed toys and putting them down the food disposal. Yes, that's oh, right. Jeez, this is messed up. Yeah, yeah. I'm not drinking milk and it's yeah. falling everywhere. How did you handle that, Sarah? I, I do you know what. <laughs> you know, I bless you for asking. I have the biggest problem, as readers, listeners, watchers know. I have the biggest problem with the mess, and I hate it when people come into their apartment and they don't shut their door. It really worries me. I don't. I mean, I must. But have, I mean, it works for the scene, right? Because she is off yeah, the rails. That's yeah. fine. But I just am like, shut your shut. <laughs> door I hate it when people come in and they're all like oh my god and they lie down on their couch and fall asleep I'm like you've left your door open <laughs> yeah um so yeah when she's spilling the milk everywhere yeah. I really did have an issue with that I yeah. did and she knocked the lamp up I'm yeah. like pick the lamp up no. that's great though because so, they're underlighting yeah. how about that shot when Max Rick's about to kill her and the shadows has the oh, original glasses has yes. the original Catwoman <clears throat> mask oh, I, 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 I was thinking it. was that intentional because that's so cool it's very cool I mean it gets talked about a lot yeah oh. it could be other way with Tim Burton he's yeah. He's pretty clever with that sort of stuff. What did you think on the rewatch of? Oh that gosh, um, so kind of in the same boat as you, you Jeremy. Like eighty nine was too. I was too young for eighty nine. Well, I guys, remember. I don't think you have to like you know. Don't rub it in <laughs> and all that. You know Here's what I mean? Sarah, the you first, were delayed. The first <laughs> time I watched Batman eighty nine uh, was a kid had a. Do you remember when they used to play when they used to play movies on TV two and yes. TV three, and then some kid would tape it, yes, and then bring the tape to school, and then the advertisements, the advertisements yeah. would somehow become part of your cinema. Yeah, watching. yeah, that's, that's right. Or the random little clip of that ad is yeah. ingrained with your with your watching of the movie. So I have seen the first thirty minutes of Return of the Jedi and the first thirty minutes of Batman eighty nine probably five times before I was age ten. Wow. <laughs> Because you would watch the start of the movie and then you would have no more time. The yeah. teacher would just, ah, let's do something else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I remember, I didn't go see um, Returns in the Cinemas. Actually, the first time I actually watched it was probably in my 20s. Mm. But I remember the advertising for it. Yeah, me too. The, the yeah. McDonald's toys. I still have the cool oh. little Batmobile where you push the button and the front shoots out like the Bat Missile. Wow. There was a little penguin buggy where you pushed it yep. forward and I the umbrella this. started spinning. <gasps> yep. And a Catwoman buggy with the tail swung around. Like, I, uh, those are indelib- indelible parts of my childhood. Wow. Yeah, and the poster um, with the three faces coming yeah, out of the darkness. Yeah, that's wow. right. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that poster is amazing. Yeah. Um, so I, I know all the iconography, um, and it was only way later I actually watched the film, enjoyed it. But I, I would say this time on rewatch, the last time I rewatched it was probably, it was sometime during COVID, so oh. probably 2020. Mm. Um, this is the most I've ever loved this movie mm. on this rewatch. I think it's amazing. Mm. Probably a masterpiece. Mm. Probably. Maybe. There's a, <laughs> lot, there's a lot to appreciate, isn't there? Yeah. This is the thing. In, in 91 or 92 or whatever we're thinking when it came out, I will have gone, oh, yeah, I'm going to the movies, you know, Um but watching it now, never mind the double entendres and all that sort of thing, yes, there's so much more to take from it, including that thing that we do as humans, right, where you look at something retrospectively. Yeah. So here's what I did. I'm watching The Penguin, and I'm like, holy moly, that's Marilyn Manson. And I went, well, okay, they obviously haven't modeled The Penguin on Marilyn Manson because he wasn't around. So then I started Googling, did Marilyn Manson model himself on The Penguin? came up, oh, there's some very strange and yucky things on the internet when you put that in. Let me just say, don't do it. It turns out that actually there have been more um, uh, comparisons made between him and um, the Riddler. Oh, and the right. Riddler okay. or something. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. I don't agree with any of them. But I was looking at Danny DeVito with the black eyes and the mm, white yeah. face and the, the lips and the meh. And thinking, oh, very Marilyn Manson, yeah. but I'm, I can't find anyone to corroborate that that I, might I mean, have been a, an it, it's influence. It's very, very clear that Tim Burton loves German expressionism. Yeah. 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 From the yeah. very first frame to the very last. Mm. Like, we get it, guy, we get it. Yeah, it's, yeah. Such um, a, it's such a confident piece, you know, <laughs> and I think that's what I love about this movie is that, because it's got some really silly stuff in this film, and... <laughs> 
but you, you kind of just have to go with the logic of, of what it's presenting. Yeah. It is from the from the moment that that scene that the sequence opens with the penguins family who yeah. are played by Pee Wee Herman, Pee Wee Herman, Herman. Yeah. and um, I forget the mum's name, but she's another. And that's so yeah. mean, right? Yeah, I feel a huge degree of pity for him. Oh yeah. I mean, just oh, eat kittens, but... <laughs> yeah, but I mean... So throughout the entire movie, right? Because, again, another thing that Tim Burton loves is monsters. Yeah. And, and there's so many Frankenstein, you know, connections between the penguin. The fact that he's chased away by the villagers, you know, he he in some way wants to be normal. Yeah. Mm. But then he's forced to become this, this, this horrible... Grotesque. Creep. Yeah. Uh, that everyone sees him as it's it's beautiful and what same a, with Batman, same with Catwoman. What a lovely narrative as well. He's been raised by penguins in an abandoned Arctic mm. zoo area. Uh-huh. He somehow grew up in the circus, so he has this kind of circus connection, and then he's become the mayor. So he's all this mural kind of mm. I could like visual you know aesthetic yeah. stuff. It's so wonderfully weird, and I just love it. And I. The, the ensembleness of this film is great. Like Batman mm-hmm. barely even appears. Batman yeah. barely even has a narrative in this film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it really is the four of them. It's Batman, it's Penguin, it's the Catwoman, and it's Max Shrek. And yeah. it's just yeah. the sharing of those pieces is yeah. really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that it's a Christmas movie, and mm-hmm. like intentionally so, because Penguin is born at Christmas time, mm. and well, he's thrown away at Christmas. Oh, Christmas. Yeah. It's horrible. Merry and, Christmas. Yeah. 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 Um, and then it takes place over that Christmas season in the yeah. future. It's Do you notice also great. that he's 33? Yeah. Yes. yes. And I that's thought, because right. all I ever think of is Jesus dying at 33. Oh. That's all. Oh, that's right. the only reason you would use yeah. 33 as an age, because mm-hmm. he looks way older than 33. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's kind of weird. <laughs> but also the born at Christmas being 30, you know, da, da, da. You definitely get the sense that they're all kind of similar ages, right? It's mm-hmm. it almost like they're all... Well, doesn't Michael Keaton look handsome when he yeah. was younger? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, he's, he's still... I, I think he still he's looks still pretty handsome now. He's 71. Yeah. yeah. No. Wow. He looks amazing. Yeah. Isn't um, it? Oh, can I just say, sorry, sorry. I was just going to say, when you talk about those four characters, he's the straight guy, though. So he does the least Batman, I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Does the least and has the the, the, the the least of the character because yeah. those other three are doing such an incredible job. And if you had to put them on a continuum, <laughs> you know, you've obviously got Penguin at the far end, and then I'm not sure which way round you'd put well, Catwoman. Max Shrek is interesting because yeah. I feel like uh, for the longest time, Walken has been typecast as like the crazy guy, and mm. his deliveries are so weird, you mm, know. Mm, mm. Um, but here he's really like. Really, really subtle, mm, I feel like, for mm. Christopher Walken performance. But for the hair. Yeah, but so for the So in a way, hair. his performance his eyes. is subtle. Yeah. And his look is a little bit crazy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you're right. He's just fundamentally Chris Walken. I mean, Keaton I find fascinating, because I, I think one of the reasons his Batman stand, oh, his Batman and his Bruce Wayne stands out amongst all the Batman and Bruce, Bruce Waynes, um, is that you get the sense that in both Batman 89 and in Returns, He's just got this, this veneer of civility, and behind that mask is just a psychopath. Mm. Oh. The, yeah. the, when he, I mean, obviously Ben Affleck Batman does some of this as well. But at the beginning, when the the Red Triangle gang is is you know trashing Gotham, there's a scene where he turns the Batman meal around and just fries a guy alive. And then the camera goes back to his face. He's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's another scene where he chucks a bomb in a clown's pants, pushes him into a sewer, turns around and smirks, going, yeah. <laughs> there are, yeah, there is some this wanton violence. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, Catwoman as well. Like she's yeah. just the most uh, unhinged Catwoman we've seen on the screen, and yeah. she, you know, the, the sort of the slashing of the guy's face with her claws. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. But my gosh, she's just joyful to watch. And, mm. Like. That sequence where she whips all of the heads off the mm. mannequins mm. and, uh, you know, meow when she, she comes out of the... Oh, it's, <laughs> it's meow it's just, explosion. Yeah, it's such an iconic <laughs> Can I say my favourite moment that I actually exclaimed, I was watching it by myself, is when she and Bruce are canoodling on the... No, they're not on the couch. They're, in, they're dancing in oh, the yeah. ball. Yeah. And she says a line and he says a line and they both have that exact yeah. same moment recognition... Oh, it's you. I loved that as yeah. a reveal. Yeah. yeah. Rather than, oh, I now know it's you. Am I going to let you know it's me? They buzz. You know what I mean? Yeah. The Love immediate follow up line, which is, does that mean we have, we to, have fight to fight now? now? Yeah. yeah. 
And just performances are wonderful. It's all in their yeah. eyes. Yeah. And, 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 of course, yeah. it's broken by the, the penguin exploding into the scene. It's yeah. Great writing. It is yeah. good writing. And I think um, in terms of the ensembleness and the fact that Keaton kind of isn't, you know, the straight guy. He's the straight guy. He's doing the least mm. amount of work. Mm-hmm. That's such a confident choice. I come back yeah. to the confidence. And mm. I think that's Tim Burton really knowing what his movie is and mm. being allowed to, to do it. Yes. Um, and I think that, that this film... The reaction to this movie wasn't great in terms of family groups and things like that, and it kind of gave rise to the Joel Schumacher uh, films. Um, But it's it's a really interesting piece of of what would become, I guess, a staple of superhero movies. I think it's hugely influenced. And a staple of DC, because we've always said, have we not, that DC is darker generally nowadays. DC is darker (coughs) than Marvel. And it definitely foreshadows that that's the way things are going. Mm -hmm. Well, let's let's move to The Flash. Yes. Speaking of darker, no, uh, it's actually... Actually, the exact opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Do you guys? What do you guys think about the Flash? Like, it's it's such an interesting movie to come out this year. Yeah. Um, it doesn't feel like it's of its time. It feels like, like it's about five years too late. Yeah. Well, is that because of the troubled history? I think in the, so. Yeah. Because this movie was literally supposed to come out five years ago. Yeah. It just keeps getting pushed back and production issues. I thought it was issues. a pretty good film. Same. Yeah. That just most of the ideas have all been done before. Yeah. I mean, I tell you what. I was uh, the opening sequence for me was amazing. Yeah. I just thought it was so much fun. <laughs> and in the moment, there were babies flying out of a building in slow motion yeah. with acid, um, yes, fire, Clever, alcohol. Right? I was like, "Clever!" I know what this movie is, <laughs> and I'm all on board for yeah. it. Yeah, and and the film delivered that level of of um, C- comic bookness. Yeah, yeah I, absolutely. I, I enjoyed that. Um, oh, the first yeah. half of the movie, I was like, this for me is like the first Doctor Strange. It's a five star superhero. I was going to say yeah. Marvel, obviously not. Superhero movie. I honestly think that the first half of The Flash is far superior to anything ever, any time. Mm. And, and, and most of that for me comes down to Ezra Miller, about mm. whom we shall speak shortly. Mm. The second half of the film, it became a bog standard kind of... Um, there is a quest that has to happen mm. apart, until the very end. And I did love, uh, we've talked about, we've said there'll be spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers yeah. abound. I really loved the emotion in the moment of him reconciling with his mother who didn't realise he was reconciling. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. I yeah. found that deeply touching and beautifully handled mm-hmm. uh, and not schmolksy at all. But again, that'll be down to who I consider to be a superb actor, which is Ezra. Uh, but mm-hmm. what about the mum? Is she from It's a Mama Tumbi? She is. Yes. Is she? Yeah. yeah. Oh, she's, she's um, wonderful. I want to say Lucia, but that's Lucia and that's the other film. Um, she, what's what's her character's name? Anyways, but yeah, she, I was trying to figure out what yeah. movie I'd known her from. And she mm-hmm. looks, still looks amazing. Wonderful. Yeah. And also like a proper actress. Yes. Hey, she's not like a Marvel mom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she's like a proper <laughs> character. That's yeah. so sad. Uh, who, who always plays Marvel Mothers? Um, what's her name from Freaks and Geeks? Um, Linda Cardinale. Oh, gosh. Oh, She's yeah. played Marvel Mums for so many of these. Is and she? Hawkeye's wife. And yeah, yeah. Linda Cardellini <laughs> is not... I mean, she's She's fine. so much better than what the role gives her. Yeah. Oh, anyway. But yeah, this, Marvel Mums. Yeah, this mom, considering she dies early on and you think it's just going to be a plot device. Uh, or, I really you know, thought he was going to be the one that has to murder her, but then yeah, I, 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 I was like, oh, this is dark. This is uh, dark. Uh, for a time, I turned to my brother and was like, wait, is he the villain? Not his younger self, but he himself. Mm. That'd be cool, but no, it wasn't. I'm, I'm glad it, it wasn't. Uh, me too, I'm glad it wasn't as well. <laughs> I like, I'm, I'm much more happy with you just moving some tomato cans around. Yeah. Um, I, what do I think about this movie? I think it should have been 20 minutes shorter. Yes. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of stuff in the middle that could have been tightened up um, because it did kind of drag a little bit. And I just, when I saw my ticket, we, me and my brother went last night and we went to a 9.30 screening oh, and I looked at my ticket late. and it was finishing at 12.14 a.m. <laughs> and I was like, oh my oh, gosh. Oh, wow. Thankfully, I didn't feel the time. I was quite yeah. happy watching the movie. Um I thought Ezra Miller as an actor, um, his main role was fantastic. I got really annoyed by alternate Barry. Young, mm. really young, young Barry. <laughs> um, he's like, oh, grated on me very quickly. But he gets a bit more serious. So Sully Barry, so if yeah. we've got good Barry and serious Barry and Silly Barry, Silly Barry gets his act together about halfway he, through. He does, and it does get better. And I did yeah. really enjoy the blue and the orange, and I didn't yeah. care the logic behind the blue and the orange. I was like, I can tell which flash is which. 
Um, oh man, the time travel logic does not make sense. But I tell you what, I did really enjoy the yeah. spaghetti metaphor. Oh, so and good. I always love, I always love new time travel rules. I appreciated yeah. it with uh, one of the Avengers. Was it was it Endgame? That Endgame, they in? yeah. They brought in some new time travel, kind of the main storyline and the, the fractures. Right. Um, with this one, they were so clear in the homage to Back to the, the Future, future. Too. which Avengers Endgame did as well, which yeah. is hilarious. Yeah. And I mean, I love the whole Eric Stoltz <laughs> joke, right? Yeah. Because he oh! filmed. How long did he film? He filmed like four weeks of that so, movie. Oh, did he legit? Yeah, this so, 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 so he was in Top Gun. Uh, no, 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 Back to the Future. future. He was oh, sorry, McFly. sorry. He got no, fired. But, oh, and then they talk. But who do they talk about being in Top Kevin Gun? Kevin Bacon. Yes. <laughs> So and it was so, that was so clever. And yeah. he's like, "What?" No, and they're like, "Yes." Da, 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 da. Yeah. Oh. So, very, so I, I, I was that. listening to the film cast, um, and they were saying, "I wonder how Eric Stoltz feels about this." Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. His, his name and his most his biggest failure of his career, I guess, being used as a punchline but it was and a, a story a of, storytelling mechanism for other movies. It was a celebration movies. of cinema. I think the, the my biggest the one that just got me the most was. But the Nicolas Cage fighting oh, okay. a spider, yeah. okay. which is a true thing yeah, guys, that I wanted guys, to happen. Yeah. When the spider came up, I, I don't know if you know the story. <laughs> I don't know about it. So, so it's, it's Kevin Smith. Um, his uh, it was called Superman Lives. He was hired by uh, a producer at Warner Brothers at the time, John Peters, to come and uh, punch up a script. Uh, in which, and he, John Peters gave him three notes. One. Superman needed a black suit because the blue and red was too f wordy. Second, that Superman could not fly. And third, that he had to fight a giant spider. Right. So three rules. Yeah. And at this point, Nicolas Cage had already come in. I think Tim Burton was looking to produce. And he had yeah. costume tests. And there are photos of Nic- Nicolas Cage in the Superman costume with long hair. Mm. And um, and they made it a reality. When the giant spider appeared, I, I cackled. I was like, no, they what did not. What a lovely backstory. Because <laughs> all I knew is that Nick Cage had always wanted to play Superman. Yeah, and I he thought... He named his son after Superman. Oh, really? I think he's called Cal or Cal <laughs> Oh, and I thought, how gorgeous that this the, this fantasy movie can mm. make some dreams come true. Yeah. You know, Eric Stoltz's dream come true. <laughs> but you know what I mean. And and yeah. I thought, oh, that's, a, that's the cutest way that you can yeah. make a multiverse interesting. Thing, I think yeah. is to play with the the positive side of what might be happening in that yeah. multiverse mm. where people ha- are actually doing you know what I mean I have to be honest I wish they hadn't used the word multiverse I wish they just hadn't because it's, it's a time travel film yeah. yeah there's allusions to other dimensions but I'm just so sick of the multiverse I, I mean especially in, in the device. same month having Across the Spider-Verse which is a far superior film yeah. about the multiverse and mm. does more interesting things with it and then this comes along and it's like oh here we go again yeah well do they actually use the word yeah um uh, Michael Keaton does in his kitchen in his spaghetti metaphor but then yeah. does he say whatever that means or something I don't know but he, he mentions the multiverse and I was like oh I'll just come up with a DC turns out Batman's it. like really knowledgeable about quantum physics yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. but I really like that this is the thing I really like I love those alternate realities yeah. I did enjoy having him and can we just say alternate. you say Batman you talk about Batman Returns which we agree with you but the Batman that I watched the most of as a kid was Batman and Robin does that mean George Clooney the George Clooney yeah. so was that the biggest delight for you I loved it I thought that I was always, like, very clever and I've wonderful got, I will look at that film with rose tinted glasses yeah. I, tr- I haven't actually gone back and watched it I rewatched it last night is it as bad as you think no no it's actually, there's a lot to love about it I mean, the, the visuals of that I mean yeah. the, Mr. Freeze he looks great I mean he's just puns the whole time <laughs> who um, plays Mr. Freeze <laughs> Arnold <laughs> Oh yeah, who plays Robin? Um, Chris, Chris O'Donnell. O'Donnell. Yeah, yeah, right. He's great. Um, right. And Emma Thurman is, is, is yeah. uh, who's also all puns. Yeah, because <laughs> my garden needs tanning, and she speaks like Catherine Hepburn. Why? I That's don't know. So Why not? Right. <laughs> yeah. And so I um, you know, I just I, I loved him as Batman, yeah. and he talks about how much he hates that film and how much he was disappointed with fans and I'm like to see him come back as Bruce Wayne yeah. yeah it's just it's like when they did um, Days of Futures Past and they brought uh, all of the old gang back together yeah. to kind of heal some of the hurt from X-Men 3 which we've <laughs> talked about before yeah um I, I loved it. My I, audience applauded when Clooney came. Yeah, out. yeah. <laughs> I I really loved it that he did, and um. So let's compare it then with the uh the the more recent Spider Man, not Spider Verse, but the Spider Man where the three oh, Spider Men right. yeah. um appear, and it's thrilling. I th- I found mm. that thrilling yeah, that they me appeared. Too. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> And that was a slight. Well, I mean, obviously that was multiversal as well, wasn't it? Because it was like I'm a, I'm an, a, I'm an Avenger, and they're like, oh, you play in a band, and yeah. you know that kind of thing. So it's a similar concept, isn't it? 
But I just really liked the fact that the Flash was like, who the heck is this guy? Yeah. This isn't the one yeah. I've been dealing with all these years. And what know? a great moment with his teeth falling out. Yeah. Um, and the F-bomb. Like, yeah, yeah really true. Good. Save really, the really PG-13 F-bomb. Well, the very last line. <clears throat> um, I, I will say, I, I agree about the... Um, what, what was that called? Uh, Spider-Man No Way Home? Is that the third one? Oh, yeah, yeah. We yeah. haven't had the No Way Home yet. Oh, no, hang on. Spider-Verse is No, no Way Home. Oh, wait. So it's like You're Spider-Man right. Homecoming, I don't know. Far From Home, No Way Home. That's yeah. right, that's yeah. right. So No Way Home, I, I did feel it worked a lot better than this because you actually get you get to spend time with Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. Yeah. And they talk about their experiences since their movies finished. You mm. know, about continuing on in Spider-Man and the, the trials and tribulations. And it's great to see Michael Keaton back. Mm. But you don't get much of that at all. He's kind of just the old crotchety Batman who may not even be a version of Michael Keaton from the Burden movies. Mm. Like he, to it's, me, he it's doesn't. A different world. He doesn't feel like Bruce Wayne or Batman from '89 or Returns. He's yeah. just Michael Keaton as yeah. Batman, which is fine. Yeah, it, it's, it's cool to see him as Batman and to say his iconic catchphrases. And it made me think of the Force Awakens. No, what's the second one? The Return of the Jedi. No, uh, Last Jedi. The Last Jedi. Yeah, you know, and the way they the way they treated Luke Skywalker. Right, it's very yeah. similar, right? And then he dies at the end. <laughs> you know, the, 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 oh gosh. The Danny Elfman score in both Returns and in The Flash is out of control. I, just, I said to my brother, who's a, you yeah. know, he's a sound person, I said, I wonder if Danny Elfman did the score. And then mm. at the end, it's not. It's some other guy. And I was like, man, this person did a great job of yeah. integrating. The, mm. It almost feels like Back to the Future as well. It feels like Alan Silver's yeah. dream kind of score. The kind mm. of rollicking, kind of lots of <laughs> clashes. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. But, but like, <laughs> the use of the score in The Flash where it literally underscores all of Batman's big lines. It like zooms in on Keaton. It's like, do, 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 do. Yeah, I'm Batman. Duh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought they did a great job because there's that, that tonal shift that's happening in the General Zod fight. And, yeah. And oh, yeah. Like the tone, the tone of Schneider's Man of Steel, which, you know, for me is the, one of the few movies I've almost walked out of the cinema. And, yeah. Um, Gave me a migraine, that movie. So boring. And, but that's such a, so earnest <clears throat> compared yeah. to the fun and frivolity of the Batman mm-hmm. and Batman Returns films. Um, and the music, I was like, when it kept going back, coming back to Batman and the, and the flying ship and his theme would keep coming back in, I was like, oh, this shouldn't be working, but it's kind of working. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sort of enjoying the way that it's jumping between these three different tonal elements, right? Because you've got the goofy Flash stuff, you've got the Batman 89... 92 stuff and you've yeah. got the General Zod stuff um, also what a way like also the few DC films I've actually seen is the Man of Steel one so I actually knew what was going on <laughs> with that um, but what a way to kind of redeem some of the boringness of well, that well, film what do you guys think about Michael Shannon yeah I thought I wondered well it's funny and I, I did think this but then I read a thing that says it makes you wonder whether they just CGI'd his performance out of previous <laughs> well footage. that's what I thought no they didn't they brought him back ah. um, and so he did a real so I read I saw a nice interview where he or I read I can't remember where he said they said we'd like you to come back and he said but hang on Zod was decapitated or whatever and I so I can't come back and they were like well you can because there's a multiverse and he was like well I don't know what that is so he went to Zack Snyder who's it's a really money, good friend it's more money what it is well he went to Zack Snyder and he said would it be okay with you and Zack said Michael it's fine go for it so that was the only reason he did it huh, okay. um, and that he was surprised because he said something like when we did Man of Steel it was like a six month shoot and this was three weeks or something so I thought far yeah. out three weeks for that but okay but same with Ben Affleck he said that you know he had a terrible time on Justice, Justice League, League whereas yes. he had a great time on this movie. and, and he, I'm so happy that he, he looks, came back for this one he looks like he's having fun which is yes, awesome I, yeah. and that again for yeah. me is the opportunity for if not redemption then a, a closure maybe mm-hmm. or to feel some peace around a film that has been an albatross around his neck. <laughs> nice. Do you know what I mean? I, yeah. No, seriously, I'm really happy about that. Mm-hmm. Hey, guys, guys, guys. Oh, we need to talk about Ezra. I was going to say, yeah. let's talk about Ezra. Oh, my God. Yeah. So did you get my? Did you get what I was saying just there? Because years ago, there was an amazing book. There is an amazing book written by Lionel Shriver. I it's called re- We Need to yeah. Talk mm-hmm. About Kevin. Yeah. It is one of my top five books of my life. And I reread it periodically, and it's sensational. So when I heard that um, Lynn Ramsey, a Scottish director, was going to be making a movie of an epistolary novel, Mm. which for readers, listeners, watchers who aren't English teachers, uh, means a novel written in the form of letters. I was like, this is a very complex book. What are you going to do? So we're not going to spoil that. But Ezra Miller plays 
Kevin in that film. And the film is sensational. With Tilda Swinton. Mm-hmm. Amazing. By the way, can I say, he looks a little bit like Kate Blanchett. I, I, I watched oh, yeah. them being right. the cheekbones. Yeah. Yeah. And a smile. You know, let's carry on. Anyway, in this, I totally loved every moment of him being on screen. B, absolutely loved the fact that he was playing two very different versions of Barry Allen. And um, the, the fact that William and I remarked the other day that, you know, in the olden days when you had the same character playing two different roles and you, they could only look at each other in profile and you had the line down the middle of the screen. And obviously technology's moved on so that it felt like mm-hmm. two characters performing together. I never, never once thought Sometimes that Sometimes the CG's a little ropey, like the right. face looks a little smooth, but it's very rare, like right. very, very well done. And the performances just gel mm-hmm. together so beautifully. So I absolutely love a conceit that has the, um, uh, one of the dudes tutoring or teaching or coaching the other dude, the other version of himself, mm-hmm. which reminds me a little bit of the Spider-Man in um, No Way mm-hmm. No Way Home. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that they're sort of sharing knowledge, and it's slightly different. But in this one, I love that he was teaching the other guy, you know what I mean, Serious and Barry, teaching Silly Barry how to... Um, was it called when they go through wars phasing, and that? Yeah, yeah. Phasing. And all that. And also you get to see Barry's... Uh, or the Flash's origin story without having to go through the slog. That's right. Absolutely. That's clever writing. Really, origin story. Really, it was yeah. clever writing mm. rather than let me just show you. It was like, well, this. Da, 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 yeah. da. And yeah. I also, I just think that this film really focused on limited number of characters. Yes. It didn't get too bogged down in lots of other people and voices, which mm-hmm. I think sometimes the Marvel films do, especially when they're like, let's bring in Guardians of the Galaxy for a second, oh. you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, too, way too many sh- cooks. Yeah. Spoiling yeah. nothing, yeah. But, I mean, it's it's problematic, right? He's I went through and read his controversies last night. Yes. And there is a lot of them. Yeah. I didn't realise how many there were, you know? And it's the same stuff. He's He, he gets physically um, ab- abusive to people around him, whether he knows them or not. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's, you know seen multiple court cases yeah um he's kidnapped people yeah stole stuff he's you know he i feel awful about him in the way that i now feel awful about the way we treated Lindsay lohan back in the day Mm -hmm. um and you remember that there were a spate of predominantly women actually young women who were going off the rails Mm -hmm. and we society just watched and kind of probably had some sympathy but also went oh my god are you just doing a Lindsay?" you know and and didn't really understand the human side of it and i'm really worried for ezra that um that we're just, it's just a matter of time before he combusts in some awful way. And I don't want that. I mean, the difference here is that he, you know, the difference between your Lindsay's and your Britney's. Oh, yeah, your Britney. Is, is that um, he's hurting others. Absolutely. You but know, he's, he's very, people. very unwell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm worried about. You bring up Jack Nicholson. I mean, he's got a terrible history that yeah. seems to not have affected much of his career. I know, but that's because, you see, he's from 50 years ago. Yeah. And mm-hmm. we've said, we've had this discussion before. In the 70s, this is why Polanski feels so yeah. um, misunderstood. You know, we can go, well, holy crap, that was a completely wrong and inappropriate. Mm, and there was a the, different what, what world. Allen's about as well. Right. Well, that's slightly creepier and weirder and mm. a bit stranger. But mm. do you know what I mean? This mm. whole shenanigans with... With you know very young young teen young teens or slightly preteens in yeah. bikinis who are willingly going to your parties, you know this is not an exoneration conversation. So please readers, listeners, watchers, don't bother writing in about this. But what I'm saying is Jack got away with it because he grew up in an era when we didn't really realise as much. Yeah. Whereas, I mean. Somebody said to me, oh, it's Ezra Miller, he's being a bit like a Kevin Spacey. And I said, well, technically it's different. Because technically, you remember how the, uh, one of the, the main things that go, is going on for him is he has a relationship with somebody whose parents believe that their, their child has been kidnapped and being manipulated mm. and all that. Uh, and I'm not getting into, I'm not exonerating and getting into issues about consent and that. But it's, it's, it's slightly different perhaps than a... A Kevin Spacey scenario. Uh, I mean, he was also filmed strangling a person outside of a yeah. pub, and you know, he's yeah. got a lot of but stuff. But that's the out of control threatening stuff. Threatening couples with knives but, and chairs. But that's and... the that's the crazy out of control yeah. stuff. Do you mm. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think my my main discomfort watching the Flash is how Warner Brothers is treating all of this. Yeah. Which is not even sweeping under the rug, just not talking about it. Yeah, yeah like you know. no publicity. Um, no they've publicity. done no publicity thingies. Well, well, not even that. It's like not even not even mentioning that our star yeah. is that has been, been A, troubled, and B, hurting people. Like, yeah. Literally hurting people. Yeah. 
um, or for the promotion of a movie. <clears throat> like, it, it just feels really gross. I mean, what, yeah. one thing is one thing to be said for this is that the movie is not making much money at the box office. Mm. You know, this and Elemental are the two kind of tentpole films of two significantly sized studios that yeah. mm-hmm. is not doing well. And I, it'd be inter- interesting to know how much of the Flash's... Um, you know how much of it is the Ezra Miller controversy? How much of it is people's just exhaustion with the genre? Yeah, yeah. That, I it's think probably a bit probably of both. Probably both. Yeah. yeah, but it's it's interesting. I, I was <clears throat> like, uh, how, how did I feel watching this movie? I didn't feel wholly complicit, but it was uncomfortable. It did take me out of the movie a bit because I was like so enjoying what he was doing. Yeah. His, what, well, sorry, what they are doing because um, uh, Ezra Miller has they them pronouns by the mm-hmm. way, um, but what they are doing on the screen and. Yeah, it's just awkward. We've yeah. talked about Woody Allen before. Mm-hmm. Um, we've done episodes on Woody Allen films, and, I, and it's just—it's just. I think the it's tricky, a relevant conversation to have. It, right? it is relevant to that, and, and I mean, it, the tricky thing about the Woody Allen thing is that that um, Woody Allen makes films that seem to tie in directly <laughs> with the issue that's going on in his yeah, life. Yeah. And to be fair to to this film, it doesn't have anything to do with the Flash. Um, uh, committing any of those sorts well, I, I would of grievances. Yeah. No, no, but I'm just saying. So for me watching it, the only yeah. way, the only moments that it took me out of it was to go, my gosh, I've read about how troubled he is in his personal life, but my goodness, he sure can turn it on and perform to a superior level, I think, mm. when he needs to. So there's this, perf- I mean, admittedly, maybe if this was made... How long ago did we say? Five years, five years yeah. ago. So maybe, and five years ago might predate actually the, the, mm. the, a lot of his troubles. Well, public troubles. Sure, yeah. sure. He's had stuff. But do you know what I mean? Like maybe if we stuck him on a set now, he might be he might be mm. less able to to professionally deliver. Whereas in this film, and obviously we don't know how much is on the cutting room floor, but oh my gosh, I thought his performances were sensational. Mm. I thought his comic timing, his wit, his. His those tiny nuances in in, in a performer's face, yeah. the delivery and everything I thought was just sensational and 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 delicious. Mm. In terms of uh, well, I guess on a slightly light, slightly lighter note, in yes. terms of um, troubling or maybe problematic is a, a better word. Things in this movie, um, I do have a question <clears throat> to ask about you uh, about the end of the movie. Yeah, uh, which is what did you guys think about George Reeves? And Christopher Reeves being oh. brought back from the dead. Oh, um, Adam West was also in there, but specifically George Reeves, you know, um, uh, one of the the early on screen Supermans who famously co- committed suicide because mm. of the role, mm. so to speak. Mm. Um, and then Christopher Reeves, who was very public about not enjoying, you know, once Superman three and four came along, his Superman persona, he then had horrible circumstances happen in his life. And, yeah. And now they're both back. Mm. And it reminded me <laughs> remind me a lot of um oh my gosh, I should have written this down in my notes. We talk about this movie all the time. It's so prescient. The movie from the director of Waltz with Bashir. Um uh what's it called? Starring um Robin Wright. Where her image, her likeness oh. is scanned into no, no, What's it's not that movie? It's, a, it's an animated movie. Um, okay, uh, I, it's not. I, I will uh, please keep on going. Well, I, I can Google it right, right, right now. So it's not the Richard Linklater one where she's swimming underwater. Um, you you mean the walls? I don't even. What we yeah, talk about know. this movie yeah, a yeah, lot? We, we've talked about it multiple times. Give me is a it, sec. Is it Buffy the Vampire Slayer? <laughs> no. Oh. I guess Ari Folman did Walls of Bashir. And his next movie was called The Congress. The Congress, there we go. That is the one I was thinking. Yeah. She does swim underwater. It goes yes, really weird. Does. It's not Richard um, Linklater at all. Oh, but, but I yeah, hated that film. It is, but it's so precious. We don't talk about it a lot. Well, we've mentioned it a couple of times, I remember. But, like, it, this is exactly what has happened now. Right. right? Where, uh, oh, gosh. Um, oh, so this is kind of jumping. Film. Jumping to another, maybe another point of conversation. Yeah. yeah but I um, appreciate it. Uh, Sarah, uh, you and I... <laughs> You and I recently saw Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. That's right. Um, maybe this is a conversation from another time. But the yeah, movie, I don't want any spoilers. The movie starts with a lot of de aging. Right. Yeah, that's not a, a, too much of a spoiler. A, a young, I did see that in the trailer. A, a young Harrison Ford circa Last Crusade. Yeah. yeah. And it looks pretty good. Yeah. And I would say it's a highlight of the film. I I, I love that bit. Mm. But in my head, there was a part of it thinking, is this what movies are going to be now? 
Like they have captured an actor's likeness pretty good, like maybe ninety five percent of the way there. Yeah. You have digitized voices as we have from um, the Kenobi series, where it's not James Earl Jones as Darth Vader anymore; it's a computer as James Earl Jones. Wow. And so we can now just fantasy cast yeah. any movie with any actor throughout history. Yeah. And. And is this what we're getting to? Is like, it going it's in horrifying... people's contracts, do you think? That, I don't um, know. That's their a good likeness. question. Well, their likeness, yeah. they usually sign over. But you know, like you George... sign over your likeness when you do a film, right? But like George project. Reeve had... Yeah, but only to that project. So I'm wondering whether there's something going in agents' contracts for stars that well, says you cannot use my well, person. Well, here's the thing, because George Reeves has no family. You know? Like, who signed on for his likeness? And now he's like this... This this is zombie in the Flash twenty twenty three. But he's long since dead, right? He is. Interestingly, but though, he hated being Superman. Yeah. But like no Val Kilmer and Val Kilmer, as we know, is very famously yeah. unwell and 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 has a, had a, quite a significant journey, not too dissimilar to mm-hmm. Christopher Reeves. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, different circumstances, obviously, but he wasn't there. He was the one Batman sends Christian Chris, Christian Bale. Oh, man. <laughs> if Christian Bale would appear, that's that the right. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. Was Val Kilmer's what? Oh, he wasn't in this he wasn't, movie. Yeah. Oh, of course and He's not. still alive, right? Of course, yes. And so I guess to, to what you're saying, William, mm-hmm. I think that's a really significant point to bring up. Right. And I, I mean, we talked about this recently around you, the whole de-aging as a choice over mm-hmm. just casting different actors. And we can suspend disbelief. But I you guess can't re- you, but you can't recast uh, Indiana Jones. We wouldn't have bought well, it. Well, I mean, if Chris, Chris Pratt is right there. No, no, but seriously, <laughs> like, you we couldn't. watched it, I suppose. But Han Solo's yeah. a bit different, isn't it? Because yeah. we haven't seen him as a young... Well, no, we did see Han Solo as younger. Uh, and I don't know. Well, yeah. it's old and organ, right? No, no, but I mean, you know, when William says about... Um, the new one. Yeah, the right, new yeah. Indiana Doing Jones. Doing specific, a specific And it's specifically yeah. Last Crusade era. We wouldn't have bought it and right. gone, oh, yeah, because he didn't look like that in The Last Crusade. You know what I mean? He didn't look like Chris Pratt in The Last Crusade. Um, mm-hmm. I just think with, like, the rise of AI, AI-generated images, yeah. um, and, and this, this whole thing with, you know, this obsession with recapturing nostalgia and youth. Yeah. I, I have a feeling that we're about to see, you know, a new Star Wars featuring the original cast as they were in 1979. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be weird and disconcerting and I don't know if this is the future I want to live in. Yeah. And, and we, I know we, we've uh, mentioned this. Do you remember when Carrie Fisher had just died? Yeah, yeah. And then that Star Wars, don't ask me which one, Rogue... It was last, Rogue One, yeah. The last Rogue One. Oh, yeah, whatever. it was Rogue One with yeah. her face, yeah. Um, and Also Peter Cushing, that weird zombie cushion. Right, so, you know, there's a part of you that goes, oh, yeah, and then going forward. Like, was yeah. Paul Walker, I think his face turned up in Fast 9, didn't it, or something? Uh, no, well, in, in flashbacks, so that was, in Fast 10, they got a lot of footage from... Fast 10, movies. that's what yeah. I'm thinking of. That's right. You know, yeah. and it's it's like... Oh, it's, on I, the I'm, one hand, I'm feeling a... See, it's different. Val Kilmer gets out of the Batmobile. He's still alive. Da, da, da. We get the joke and we go, yeah. oh, nice. But if it's somebody from the past, 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 like yeah. Christopher Reeves, that was... It's a little earthy. I, I don't know. I'm And I'm pretty certain Paul Walker will be back as a character in the Fast franchise. Oh they will see... They will, right? Don't you get that feeling? He's... Do you mean if, if enough time has passed? No, no, but by the time we get to 11 or 12, sure, like, no, but what Brian I mean is, is back but and it's a now bit like, a CG man. You know in jokes and that when they go, yeah. is it too soon? Until oh, recently yeah. it's been too soon. People yeah. would go, no, that is unacceptable. And yeah. obviously obviously, his estate and everything has to has to change its mind about that. Mm-hmm. But you'd need to wait a long time. Yeah, they've left his character alive, haven't yeah. they? It's just he he's, never he's comes to anything. He's always in the background. He's I mean, always babysitting I, the kids. That's right. Which is that. quite the weirdest Brian? thing ever. Oh, he's with the kids. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, I hear you. I agree with you. But I also think that it'll just become another tool in the toolkit of films and, yeah. and you have to take it with the consequences that it brings you know yeah. cgi over over overly using cgi makes people less enamored with movie magic right? yes. it's just the reality like it might look great but we you know as tarantino says we know how the trick's done mm-hmm. i think it's the same with this it's like this there is just not even not even to be too obvious but it's like it's not very human to yes, have that's a, right. a computer genera- generated 
face. old person on screen. Yeah. Or even a young person. Like, CG Henry Cavill in this was yeah. so bad. Mm. There's so much CGI people. All of that, that amazing kaleidoscope. Oh, oh, that's cool. That was cool. But that was all yeah. CGI. It's a, it's a zeotrope, right? The, yeah. Um, yeah. Have you really been? Cool. Have you seen, seen one of those real yeah. ones in real life? Where so it's cool. All three D printed, and then it's, there's a strobe light, and it yeah. spins, oh, and it no. looks like there's an animation happening in front of you with real things. Oh no! It's very cool. Do you know who we haven't mentioned at all? Is Supergirl, and yeah. we don't need oh. to. So there we are. Let's <laughs> yeah. move on. Well, uh, my, my one thing with Supergirl is I I like the I don't know who the actor is. I, I like her, and yeah. I think she she has really good chemistry with yeah. the rest of the cast. It's just. She feels like such a weird addition. She feels like an add-on. Yeah, yeah. She feels like something from Twilight. She looks like Kristen Stewart. I quite liked her, but... She, yes, yeah. that's right. But it did feel a bit like, oh, it's... And, it's oh, and who's this? Oh, you're high. And, and now she's okay. gone? Forever, question mark? I, I, yeah. <laughs> um, for, for me, like, going back to the Man of Steel stuff, like, yeah. I do not like Man of Steel, but one thing I do give props to the movie is it, it's a really really solid movie for special effects right the effects in that movie are obviously a labor of love and they're amazing mm. the effects are not amazing in the flash like if you if you compare scenes from man of steel and from the zod fight in the flash mm. the flash ugh, I, I hate using this term but i use it all the time now it looks like a cartoon yeah and man yeah. of steel it looks like super power be, be um super powered beings beating the crap out of each other right and this it looks like supergirls punching tennis balls right and the humans go and turning into into little cgi men um it just doesn't look good and maybe it's budget maybe it's time maybe it's just art style maybe i mean for the tone of this movie i didn't really mind okay. I, I don't disagree with you but yeah. I, just I just thought, didn't yeah. really care i don't okay. care about the, like the babies the babies was great the babies they just was looked amazing. terrible yes <laughs> yes but but it was such a cleverly yeah. witty as right. you know as as jeremy said such a witty sort of we're all going oh there's a scalpel going towards it Whoa. i mean putting the baby in the microwave <laughs> just got me i was like i can't believe they've literally but then yeah. they do sort of a straight-faced fight scene in a desert or wherever mm -hmm. the heck you know uh, who cares it's just someone getting thrown around a whole lot don't really care yeah um yeah whereas and, then you suddenly go back to real life and you're dealing with a mom and she's in a convenience store and does yeah. she or doesn't she pick up the tomatoes suddenly that's so huge Do you know, and there's no fight involved i literally had like we know how he puts the tomatoes on the top shelf uh -huh. yeah. um i didn't get that that was going on in that sequence i was like what's going on why is his face did he move the camera and so Afterwards, when he explains it to the press or to someone, I was like, "Oh, thank you, thank you, movie." <laughs> yeah, I, I needed, yeah. I needed you to actually explain that to me right now. Yeah, so yeah, I was a yeah. Bit confused. Fair enough. I, I will say, um, just <laughs> what you guys were talking about the final battle, like Keaton, Keaton's Batman has never been so limber in mm. any of these films. He is like a ninja. He's like taking out Russian dudes. He's flipping. He's flying. If you look at Batman Returns. Mm. This guy is so awkward. He, he's like in, in this rubber he armor. He can hardly move his arm. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Yeah. Well, he famously <laughs> couldn't move his neck. Right. right? Oh, that yeah. was the big thing. And so in this one, he finally could. Oh, well, which they joke about in the flash when other Barry puts on the, the cow and his face like, I can't trim my neck. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's all very clever. Yeah. We haven't talked about who wrote it. Oh, it's right. It's the guys from Game Night. No, no. They did uh, uh, one treatment of the Yeah, the sorry. But uh, um, the, the final writer was Christina Hodgson, who did Bumblebee. Yeah. Oh, oh. She's really good. Yeah, I thought um, I mean, there's some nice choices in this. Yeah. yeah. There, the only issue I really have with this film, apart from the Ezra Miller stuff, which we've talked about, uh -huh. is the fact that it just feels really dated. Yeah. Like, it just a lot, of the, a lot of the cool things about it, We've seen in Guardians of the Galaxy. We've seen in the Endgame, you know, Infinity mm, War stuff, Spider the Spider-Man movies. Yeah. You know, we've kind of seen it all. But it was still a really solid, solid ride. All right. Thank you for listening to another episode of Cinema in Context. If you enjoy our podcast, consider signing up to our Patreon. Cinema in Context patrons receive access to exclusive minisodes, opportunities for one-on-one -on -one discussions about the films you love, and our extended episode catalogue, including extended content of the episode you're listening to right now. We discussed our favourite moments from one of the films, things we would change, and a third film that we would group with them. Mm -hmm. I still want to say partner with, mm. but it doesn't work. Mm. Find out more about our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash cinema in context. 
You can listen to Cinema in Context on SoundCloud, Spotify, Radio Public, Stitcher, Amazon Music, and Apple Podcasts. You can also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, which are great places to let us know what you think of this episode, as well as give us suggestions for future films to discuss and compare. Look out for our next episode in a month's time, and until then, no hora mai!